Dr. Samuel Epstein is an emeritus professor of occupational and environmental medicine at the University of Illinois School of Public Health at Chicago and the chairman of the Cancer Prevention Coalition. He is an internationally recognized authority on the causes and prevention of cancer and on carcinogenic substances in our air, water, workplace, and consumer products such as food, household products, cosmetics, and toiletries. He has published 260 scientific articles and authored several books, including The Safe Shoppers Bible, The Politics of Cancer, The Breast Cancer Prevention Program, and Unreasonable Risk. He is the recipient of many national and international awards, including the prestigious 1998 Right Livelihood Award, the Alternative Nobel Prize. All major industrialized nations are now facing an epidemic of cancer. The incidence of cancer over the last few decades has escalated to what I now call epidemic proportions. It's clear that to, uh, tobacco plays a, smoking plays a very significant role in this, and smoking probably accounts up for up to in between a quarter and a third of all cancers, particularly cancer of the lung. However, there's a very wide range of other cancers whose rates have increased in terms of one, two, or three hundred percent over the last few de decades, including childhood cancers whose rates have gone up by forty percent, um, pr prostate cancer uh, two uh, hundred percent, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, multiple myeloma two hundred percent, brain cancer in adults eighty percent, breast cancer sixty percent. Now we have a great deal of information on the causes of these cancers. We when I say information, I mean well-documented scientific information published in peer-reviewed, uh, the peer-reviewed literature, which shows clearly that these cancers, other of course than the tobacco smoking cancers, are due to involuntary exposure to industrial carcinogens in the totality of our environment, in our air, in our water, and in the workplace, and in our consumer products. And by consumer products, I mean food, household products, and cosmetics and toiletries and personal care products. Now when it comes to air and water, the consumer has very little opportunity to influence his or her risks from this multitude of carcinogens to which they're exposed. When it comes to food, there are some limited options by buying organic food, um, but in fact uh, the orga organic food is still relatively expensive compared to the non-organic food. But when you're dealing with cosmetics and personal care products, you're dealing with, some, with a set of exposures from, from mainstream products which, are re which really pose unparalleled risks of avoidable cancer and other avoidable chronic diseases. Now, to explain this more fully, I should point out that when you examine mainstream cosmetics, when I say mainstream, I mean uh, 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 products produced by the large mainstream multi-global industries, um, when you examine these, you find that they are literally a witch's brew of undisclosed carcinogenic ingredients, contaminants, and precursors. When I say undisclosed, um, you, you may well say, well, look, surely the you have the ingredients labeled on the back and anybody can read them and tell. In however, listing of ingredients means nothing to, I would say, almost 100% of, of consumers. And to, uh, very little to the overwhelming majority of scientists because the chemistry is complex and uh, to understand the, uh, what the ingredients mean you've got, to you've got to understand chemistry, toxicology and carcinogenesis and all of these together. So the listing of ingredients alone without any warning as to the hazards of these ingredients is meaningless. So in fact the consumer is denied the right to know of avoidable exposures to carcinogens in consumer products, and in particular, uh, cosmetics and personal care products. Now, why do I focus on cosmetics and personal care products? And the reason is because these contain up to about, the mainstream industry products contain up to about, believe it or not, nearly 80 carcinogenic ingredients. And they fall into three categories, those ingredients which are carcinogenic themselves, some ingredients which uh, break down and release carcinogens like formaldehyde, or some ingredients which are precursors of, of, uh, of carcinogens. You have some ingredients which alone are safe, but can combine to form carcinogens. And other, the others are some ingredients 
by themselves are safe, but they're contaminated with carcinogens. So basically, the consumer using mainstream product is exposed to a wide range of, of carcinogens, which not only incidentally produce cancer, but most of these carcinogens induce other effects, toxic effects, like neurotoxic effects, immunological and reproductive. And these products, particularly, particularly the personal care products, are applied from birth till death to all intents and purposes, because there are many of these personal care products used on infants. They're applied to large surface areas of the skin. And we do know that the skin is not a barrier to these uh, uh, ingredients. And they're easily absorbed. And the absorption is increased still further by the presence of what we call surfactants or detergents. So from life, the, from the beginning of life till death, and in fact before life, because when pregnant women use these products, they, uh, the ingredients are absorbed and affect the growing fetus. So you have this massive exposures to multiple carcinogens from birth till death, applied to large areas of the skin, and absorption is facilitated by the presence of uh, these detergents and also by some other ingredients like SLS or sodium lauryl sulfate, which damage the skin and increase absorption. So the important point is the consumer, the overwhelming majority of consumers, going to purchase mainstream products unknowingly expose themselves to avoidable risks of cancer. And this is one of the reasons why in the present cancer epidemic, one in every two men will get cancer in their lifetime and one in every three women will get cancer in their lifetime. Now this creates a powerful impetus for responsible alternative industries to, provide, to produce safe products and to educate their distributors into the fact they're producing safe products. And they can produce safe products quite relatively easily by phasing out the hazardous ingredients and by replacing them by safe, with safe ingredients. And in this respect, New Ways has been the only MLM, the multi-level marketing uh, industry, which has, over the last few years, proceeded in a steady and progressive fashion to remove any ingredient in which there is a suspicion or any question of risks of cancer and of other chronic diseases. There really is also a, a very strange paradox. People are becoming more and more health conscious, um, particularly over the last two decades. And this health consciousness has resulted in a whole array of magazines, uh, articles, uh, promotional pieces dealing uh, with particular lifestyles, or the organic lifestyles and yoga. So people are becoming uniquely health conscious. However, this health, co health consciousness doesn't extend itself to cosmetics and personal care products because this area is a difficult area uh, for consumers to understand. They're given no information. They assume that when they see ingredients labeled on the back of a tube or a bottle, that this means the ingredients are safe, because otherwise they wouldn't be listed there. But these ingredients really mean, the list reading of these ingredients means nothing to the consumer, because they're not told which are safe and which are unsafe. And there's no warning label on uh, the, uh, the, the mainstream products. So the mere listing of ingredients is meaningless. And in fact, it, it's really uh, an expression of a denial of consumers' right to know, because uh, many of these ingredients are clearly pose avoidable risks of cancer, but there's no warning. Uh, th these risks are not communicated to the general public. And this is why it's very, so important to encourage those small alternative industries who are producing safe products to encourage them to proceed, to educate consumers, and um, to inform the public as to the safety of these products and to the fact that when they use these products, they reduce their risks of cancer.